Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new real life car review. In this episode I'm driving the all new Hyundai Kona. And as with the outgoing version, the new model is available with three engine options. There is the 1 liter TGDI mild hybrid, there of course is the Kona electric, and the middle ground is this one, the 1 1.6 hybrid. So let's find out what this car is all about. All right, folks, let's start this episode with the engine options. As said, there is the 1 liter TGDI engine, and that's equipped with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. It's an engine I like really much, uh, 120 horsepower, and it's very fuel economical and being a very simple engine. That's nice. Then there is this 1.6, it's the same engine as I tested earlier in the Kia Niro, which is the sister model of the Hyundai Kona. It has a CVVD, a continuous variable valve duration, which allows the engine to go super economical or super powerful, as powerful as naturally aspirated engines get. And it also allows for internal EGR, which means you don't have to run exhaust gases back into the intake port and then um, getting a lot of deposits in the intake. It's a very interesting engine. The engine itself has 105 horsepower and it's made it to a six-speed double clutch transmission and the electric motor is sandwiched in between, in between where you normally have the clutch. Um, I have to look the specifics up. The engine itself is 144 newton meters of torque. The electric motor has 170 newton meters of torque. Uh, 240 volt electric system. There is a 1.56 kilowatt battery hidden in the car. Uh, combined power output of the gasoline engine and the electric motor is 140 horsepower. And the top speed of this car is 165 kilometers an hour. There's just a tad over 100 kilometers an hour. So now let's hop into the interior because there's a lot to discuss there. The interior of the new Hyundai Kona is really something special, I think. What's most noticeable is that the roof extends quite far forward. Uh, the cap in its entirety is built quite far forward. There's a small windscreen, which is, I wouldn't say it's noticeably steep, but it's a smaller windscreen. You have a very short dashboard, and the top edge of the instrument panel of the screens is quite low, just like in the Kia Niro I tested earlier. The benefit of that is you have a good view towards the outside and the screens are in your peripheral view so, so they're not constant in your eyesight. I like this very much. This white interior with synthetic leather seats is only available in the premium trim level. Uh, you could also choose for black leather with a black interior. I like this white very much. It reminds me a lot of the Ionic models. All physical buttons for the infotainment, all physical buttons for the HVAC controls, I like it very much. Down here I have a nice little panel, I'll show you in the close-up, for the charger options with a very uh, intricate cover for the 12 volt outlet. It looks like a button, it's very nice engineered with eye for detail. And down here I have a cluster for the uh, heated and ventilated seats, the steering wheel is heated. You always, in every uh, model, you get a drive mode selector which consists of snow, eco or sport. And for me, eco is the way to go. There's a button for the parking sensor and for the auto hold function. And the surround view monitor that's only available in this top trim level, the premium. This version also is a premium sky, which means I have a large glass uh, sunroof which opens and tilts. As with the Ionic models, the gear selector is over here on the steering wheel column with you rotate uh, something I always have to get used to, but after a day of driving, I don't know any better. The seats of this Hyundai Kona look very basic, but as with every Hyundai, they sit remarkably well. They, uh, the bolstering and the padding is a bit on the stiffer side, but you can really sit a long time in the seats. In this premium, the top grade, you get electric adjustment. There are two memories for the seat, and the nice thing is that the passenger seat also is electric adjustable with the ability to tilt the seat itself. You can tilt the front up so you have more support here in your upper legs just behind your knees, which is very nice. One downside of this color combination is you have these silver buttons over here and with the light 
like it's shining on there right now makes it a bit hard to read the script on there uh, in the dark of course it's backlit and when you up for the lower grade trim levels all of this is more of a gray color these buttons are easier to read that only applies to the silver buttons in the screen here and the important thing to note about a new Kona is that it grew quite a bit in length and also the wheelbase grew quite a bit and that translates especially in more leg room and room for the rear passengers this version as I mentioned has the optional panoramic sunroof which means that the roof the ceiling is coming a bit down but despite that I have enough headroom and as you can see I have loads of leg room with the seat in my driving position I can stow my feet underneath the driver's seat and this height the height of the seat in relation to the floor is nice and high and you heard me complain a lot about that in previous real life car reviews that you can't sit nice in the rear seat it especially goes for the Ionic 6 um, I was a bit disappointed in that but over here I have a nice seating position the seat itself is nice deep the angle is good and it also goes for the seat back um, in terms of width we have very uh, flat doors in the doors are the controls for the rear the heated rear seats which has three positions that's only available in this top trim level there are two USB-C outlets there are fans and the nice thing is there is a very light interior this is a nice place to be and in the center armrest there are two cup holders so nothing fancy over there so now we do our window test see the window line is quite high but since the seat is up quite high and when you have smaller children in kids seats I suspect they have will have a good uh, view towards the outside uh, all in all the interior space especially for the rear passengers is one of the big positives of this car of course we need to have a peek in the boot to see what the cargo space is like 403 liters with the rear seat in place when you fold the rear seat down you have 1300 liters of cargo space one handy trick Hyundai has up its sleeve for the Kona as with the Bayon it has quite a large partial shelf but when you pull it out slide it down here and there's a hole down now your partial shelf is a nice position so it doesn't float around there is a secondary floor there's a large bin this hard floor you can put one level down but now it's level <coughs> with the opening so it's easier to slide your groceries in and out all in all it's a very practical cargo space alrighty folks we're driving in the all new Hyundai Kona hybrid so let's give you my driving impressions first thing You'll know when you're driving this car, especially with this light interior, it feels very roomy. As I said, the dashboard is very short, very low. You have a great overall visibility. The mirrors are great. The blind spot monitor works great. And also, you can use the camera while driving as a huge uh, reversing camera. Uh, normally, when you're driving slow on a parking lot, that activates a surround view monitor. You can select different views. I love the 3D. Uh, image you have of the car to see how the car is situated in the parking lot and in the parking spot anywho how does it drive well I can be fairly short it's basically the same as the Kia Niro I tested earlier in this series um, it's a six-speed dual clutch transmission so the gear changes are very quick and they are almost seamless uh, only when you're on the full acceleration you can feel a gear shift especially when the car has to shift two gears down to engage a quick acceleration but other than that gear shifts are seamless and the handoff between the internal combustion engine and it switches back to EV mode is completely seamless engine also is very quiet the interior is a little bit less quiet than I expected and that's because it's something I didn't discuss in the interior segment there are a lot of hard plastics and you can tell that Hyundai had to build this car to a certain price point I mean with the starting price sorry starting price 
around 30,000 euros. It's on the cheaper side for this segment over here in the Netherlands and the rest of the world. This car is much cheaper. But anywho, uh, they used a lot of cheaper plastics in the interior. But as you may have noticed already during the drive, nothing is creaking, nothing is rattling. It's a very quiet interior. The only thing is these harder plastics in the interior make it a bit more noisy. And the most noise seems to come from the rear axle. Um, I must say the tire and suspension noise is very low. But the rear wheel wells aren't carpeted or lined with uh, uh, noise reduction materials. <coughs> Maybe if you treat it with some underbody coating with noise cancelling characteristics, it'll be a bit quieter. But all in all, it isn't a very noisy car, but I just drove an older Hyundai iX20 from family members, and that car is quieter during the ride, especially when you yeah, when you have cloth upholstery and more cloth panels in the doors. Yeah, this is a bit of an echo chamber, but like I mentioned, it isn't a super noisy car at all. There's not much wind noise over the mirrors and not over the windscreen when it meets the roof, so that's very good. <coughs> then suspension and steering. Well, the suspension is set up on the firmer side, the springs are quite firm. The steering is, well, you don't get a lot of feedback, but that's what you get with electronic power steering. Steering is a speed bump. It is on the firmer side, but I must say how the, the suspension in the rear axle setup is actually quite uh, good. Yesterday I rode as a passenger on the rear seat. Well, it, like I mentioned, it's very roomy, and also when we went over a speed bump, uh, you didn't get a shock as you sometimes have in other cars where the suspension on the rear axle is on the firmer side of things. The steering is light, it's precise, and normally I always mention that when you choose uh, the smaller wheel size that you get more ride comfort gets a bit quieter but it doesn't apply to this car because those largest wheel size the largest wheel size those 18 inch wheels also have very firm sidewalls so there isn't a lot uh, to gain in that respect if you would choose the smaller wheel size and that would be the 16 inch steel or alloy wheels only the base model has steel wheels with plastic on caps I'm driving on one of those back roads. Lots of nice curves. Typical sunny day. There would be a lot of motorcyclists over here, convertible drivers. This is a road I tested the Mazda Miata slash MX5 on. It's, those are really driver's cars. And these roads are so much fun to drive. This is much less of a driver car, but uh, well, the speeds aren't high, and as you may expect, the car handles it well. Steering is light, it's fairly direct, doesn't need much input, has a little bit of body roll, those 90 degrees curves. But even when you're a spirited driver and you end up driving a Hyundai Kona hybrid, you can really enjoy those roads and enjoy the car and enjoy yourself. 141 horsepower. This is not a sprinter car, it's not a fast car, but it's fast enough for its audience, or at least the audience Hyundai had in mind when they developed this car. It's a family SUV, smaller side, but it's a roomy interior, used cargo space as we have seen, and it has plenty of power for that use. Um, in terms of fuel economy, well, I did a lot of highway driving with this car uh, over the last couple of days. And some of those back roads and during filming, the car is always idling. And idling means it can run in EV mode also. Um, and I didn't reset the, uh, the, the mileage counter, the gas mileage counter. And my average fuel consumption until now is 5 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's very good. That's the same fuel consumption. I usually get from our Prius 2. Uh, I think under ideal circumstances I could 
lower the fuel consumption to 4.7, 4.8 liters per hundred kilometer. And I'm actually quite surprised by how well this car performs in terms of fuel economy, uh, given the fact I drive this car shorter than I normally do. Usually I have a test car for a week. I only have this car over the weekend. I wanted to enjoy myself a bit too, and I didn't pay much attention to uh, driving in the most fuel economical way. But then I'm getting away with five liters per hundred kilometers, which is fairly good in my opinion, especially given the size and the aerodynamics of this car. Now the new Kona is equipped with the latest Hyundai infotainment system. And one of the things this system does really well, it uses the navigation information to work, to cooperate with the cruise control. We've seen it in many other cars. Uh, Nissan Pro Pilot also does that. And when I drive this car and I approach an intersection, but I don't slow down, uh, navigation tells the car, hey, we're approaching an intersection or a roundabout. Uh, tell the driver to go so it sounds a beep and it says go so you can lift your foot from the accelerator to slow the car to slow down the car a little bit now apparently the driver monitoring system also uses this information because when i approach an intersection or traffic lights and when i start paying attention to traffic from coming from the left to right and look into my mirrors uh, the thing is a bit more forgiving than it was in the Subaru Solterra. In that car, when I was approaching an intersection and I was looking to oncoming traffic or looking into the mirrors, that thing immediately started beeping, telling me to sit up straight and look ahead. But you know what? When you're in traffic, you want to keep an eye out on other traffic, especially on intersections and roundabouts. And this car apparently knows that when I approach roundabout, look to oncoming traffic, I don't have my eyes straight ahead, but I'm looking into the mirrors, looking around, uh, this doesn't start to be. Well folks, I think I covered all my talking points for the drive segment, uh, let's head over to the middle of nowhere where I'll give my final thoughts on the new Hyundai Kona Hybrid. Oh boy, the car really got dirty during the test drive. The harvest season has just started this week. There's a lot of mud and clay on the road, so my apologies. Anyway, what are my thoughts and opinions on the new Hyundai Kona? Well, one thing Hyundai did really well, in my opinion, is that they didn't change the format of the Kona all too much. It still is the same car in terms of usability, uh, drivability and practicality. Um, only difference is it's a larger car, it's grown in every direction and especially the interior space and the cargo space benefits from that. They didn't change all too much on the drivetrains. Um, I think this hybrid version is a nice middle ground if EV is nothing for you and the one liter turbocharged engine may be a bit too weak. Uh, it's a good option to have. Fuel economy is great with 5 liters per 100 kilometers, but I'm really curious to see what a smaller 1 liter engine does in this car, and hopefully I can do a future real life car review on that. When you look at the design and the new design language Hyundai has, I like this very much. Now the Kona still is one of the more outspoken models in the lineup, but when you look to the practical aspects of this car, it still is a super practical car. It really is substance over style and that's a good thing and that's what the Kona kept from the outgoing model. Well, I have a question for you. I've been filming this real life car reviews for a while now and I'm still trying to figure out this format. I would like to hear from you if you have any questions or remarks or things that you want to see different in these reviews, please let me know down below in the comments. If you do like these reviews, uh, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like. If you have any further questions or remarks, you can also let them know down below in the comments. Um, if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. I'll leave the link down below in the description. And for now, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.